So, welcome to the panel. Video game kills the video star, so maybe uh, it refers also a little bit to me, the video star here. Maybe I will be soon replaced. I still have to find my way here in this environment between palm trees and wonderful flamingos. So, uh, the panel today, I mean, oh, it's uh, about um, what does it mean to present music in these new spaces of the internet in 3D environments that are normally used for games culture. What does it do to music production, to sound production, to the whole music economy? And what will be maybe the future or not? Uh, what is already um, announced by these new developments? And also the question is, how does it uh, uh, feedback also into the game, games culture at the end? And uh, what are the challenges in this new realm of the internet that is uh, now opened, or let's say it was, we were all forced somehow to deal with, with uh, the wonderful pandemic situation. So, already announced Ben Rausch, and uh, I mean, Ben is, an, uh, it was so nicely called in his um, biography, an astronaut, a multidisciplinary artist that is exploring the unknown. So Ben finds himself probably like now in a good situation because it is the unknown we are exploring at the moment. Uh, ben already performed on Wednesday at the opening with his band Team Laser Beam. So check that out. Then uh, we have Freya Burkhout, a uh, well acclaimed composer and vocalist and creative technologist, and she's based in Eora in Sydney in Australia. Hello, Australia. Hello. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I forgot to say a wave a little bit so that people see who you are. Then we have Jemek. Uh, I don't see the picture at the moment here in the studio, but the last thing I saw, he was in this beautiful environment uh, in real life at uh, Gesundbrunnen in Berlin. And uh, Jemek has worked with different musicians and is also uh, one of uh, the um, uh, promoters of Techno Polo, like a version of Polish techno that has a quite specific and interesting story. So we won't talk about that, but I can only recommend that you go deeper into it after this panel. And um, then we have Mary Orcher, also based in Berlin. And uh, Mary is from uh, Russia. Our last panelist I would like to present, Mary Orcher. Um, Mary was born in Russia, but lives for quite a long time off now in Berlin. And um, she is quite active with different artists, but I would recommend that you definitely check out her release on Klangbad and also um, the sociopolitical essay she wrote along with that. I've, I, I, I forgot the title, I read it. Oh, I have the title, it's written also here. No, it's the same as the album. But so it's the rest against the, uh, the rest against the people. Good. <laughs> and uh, yeah, so we are all here because all of us are somehow working in the realm of sound and music. I'm Oliver Bauerhen. Uh, I'm one of the three directors of CTM Festival, Festival for Adventurous Music and Arts in Berlin, that takes place every year, end of January, beginning of February. So, um, and also I ask myself the questions, what do we do with this wonderful new world, especially as also our festival was lucky this year, but the upcoming year we don't know yet. Um, so, therefore, we are also asking a lot of questions and asking also questions to this technology we are all presented with. And that, and and that, has, and that also has also different problems, problems like I have my <laughs> So you see, we are all still in a sort of beta testing mode, which is actually quite an interesting place to be in. So we are allowed for mistakes. Um, we can spin around with our ideas, we can try things. And uh, this, of course, offers quite a lot of opportunities. And I think the brave people are the ones who engage now in this, uh, I mean, 
I don't want to put it in this colonizing words, but it's a sort of a conquest of conquering <laughs> a new realm that hopefully offers different possibilities. But this we will all discuss today. And um, Mary, you, I mean, yesterday we had a little pre-meeting and we discussed it. And the first question was, and this I would like to ask Mary actually, and then um, everybody maybe to join us in. What is your experience with being online? You perform, for example, here on Wednesday in the stream. So, um, so um, what kind what of, kind of <laughs> impact, does, impact it does it have for you for and, you uh, and how, uh, do you how do you feel in this, feel new, in this world? new world? Not, not in real life on stage, but suddenly with a public, with a public that, is that, is that is far away and you, and you all, around all around the world. The world. Ooh. Um, theoretically, theoretically, we could reach a lot more people being, being no, specific, no specific physical, physical location, location. But, at but at the same time, I think that this is a shared notion of a lot of musicians that I spoke with. I, spoke with. Um, I think everybody, I think feels, everybody feels, feels tremendously, tremendously disconnected, disconnected from, other from other human beings. Human beings. Uh, yeah. Actually, naturally, we all are, we all whether, are we're whether we're used to performing, performing on stage or not, not. I think we're learning, we're learning to reconnect with other, other humans and everything feels, everything feels very, very strange at the last moment, few last few weeks. Relearning, Relearning. All, these really all these really basic things, things that I think we, we, have, been we have been taking for granted <laughs> all these years and we're learning to appreciate them again. So it's a very interesting time. Yeah, I think we all have different challenges. Um, Freya, you are coming from the, f actually you are compo you composed quite a lot of soundtracks and music for films. Mm -hmm. um, it would appear that maybe for you it would be easier also to deal with this um, uh, remoteness because this is somehow already, you are trained already in it. How is it for you to, or what do you think about this new way of uh, mm -hmm. presenting? Musician. Yeah. I think, yeah, I have been buffered from that because my work has always existed in this sense that I do it and then send it off into the world and, you know, you get one screening and you get that interaction from the audience if it's like a friends and family screening or if you're actually going to the cinema. But, you know, apart from that, it's like you're sending your baby off into the world and you kind of hope for the best. But I, mean, I but I mean, I come from a band background as well and I know... I can't even imagine how it would be trying to do online shows now. I think that that lack of energy from the audience and not getting the feedback, that real-time feedback, is it's a huge part of what playing live is about, you know, having that shared experience. And I think it makes complete sense that musicians are trying to make sense of how how this new thing is going to work for us. Is it is it can it ever replace, you know, the real real-time thing? I don't think it's possible to do that. Um Ben, you had a quite specific take on it because you are already the whole time, like 15 years already within the realm of uh, the game industry. You are dealing a lot with the 3D environments. So uh, for you, it must be a little bit a different perspective on acting in this environment. So, sorry, is that for me? Sorry, is that for yeah, me? that's for you. Uh, maybe I have to say it louder. Ben, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sorry. Yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> sorry. No, so, no, sorry. No, sorry. I lost you for a second there. Um, yeah. So it is. It's it's very strange for me because I have. Um, yeah, as you say, it's been sort of fifteen years of of exploring the idea of how to translate um, the feeling or energy that I get from music into other mediums and trying to explore how to sort of reframe and recalibrate um, performance and kind of just rock and roll spirit into other mediums. Um, so where this largely started for me with was actually with like visual performance and creating systems to play, play light um, with bands on stage, which is something people are not really used to um, seeing, you know, someone performing visuals alongside people performing music is, is relatively rare, and particularly, I guess, in the way that I do it, which is very spontaneous and messy and prone to kind of breaking and falling apart right in front of people. Um, and within the game space, yeah, I've been involved for six years now in making games with our game band team, Laserbeam. And the idea with that was also to try to sort of translate rock and roll spirit into creating interactive artworks rather than just purely audio pieces. But now we're in a very weird space where suddenly everything's flipped around and this 
shift towards virtual experiences is trying to fill a space left behind by physical, real musical experiences. And um, yeah, definitely just to echo what's been said, it's, it's, it's no, no replacement and I don't think it can be really, but it, it's very exciting and interesting to be, you know, witness to this period and seeing what solutions people are coming up, up with. And I think we've already seen some interesting novel approaches and we'll definitely see more. I also think I'm quite enthusiastic that it will happen. So, Jamek, um, you are already also online with uh, your artworks. You are um, figuring out like how to present yourself on Facebook, on Instagram, etc. So, you are already using this medium, the internet, the digital technology, to um, uh, as a platform to present your art. So, what is it for you now that suddenly everybody else is also coming and entering the? streams and uh, 3D environments. Am I the only, I the only artist that has Facebook actually in this group? Maybe. I think so, uh, yeah. <laughs> What's then the you have, you have a, Mary, you have Instagram and Facebook, right? Sure, sure, sure. sure. Yeah, I yeah, assumed yeah. everybody yeah. does. Yeah, I think <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, well, just to, yeah, I don't think it's like a special introduction to me that I'm the artist with Instagram and Facebook. <laughs> but, um, but, you, <laughs> but you are using it also on, as, as medium for your art, so that's maybe the difference, but not as a promotion yeah, to yeah, how, only... Why, no, I don't know, I, don't, I just, use, I it just a, use it as a platform like artists do now, like um, I don't actually use it as a... Well, what do you mean? But in my opinion, from what I saw from uh, from your Facebook thread and uh, Instagram, that you not only promote the information like I have out a new LP and or whatever, but you uh, promote also quite well and nicely and interestingly your artworks that are going along with it, all this visual side and all the the characters you're creating. So I think that is actually quite interesting, and this is a little bit different use than. Um, Well, I actually, well, I I actually don't I don't consider myself, consider myself as like as kind of an internet, internet, internet active, active artist really, because I really uh, uh, check the dates. It's, like, it's like I rarely post something Instagram on Instagram or Facebook. Facebook. I'm really lazy with that, and um, and actually I do post stuff about. I mean, I don't post like I don't, I don't post, post like I try to find a nice picture then, but it's always like reality kind of connected that when I have like live shows or whatever I don't um, do actually I don't create an internet character like uh, many artists do now yeah that's obviously also uh, quite a new world that they're doing it and they're forced to this so we I mean in my opinion um, it seems also but uh, what you are saying all is like that uh, music can't be alone anymore in this new 3d streaming digital world well it's like there are different uh, mediums like you have the um i don't believe in the idea to like reconstruct the whole medium of live music into a 3d uh, streaming whatever in, in, in um, room or what like space um Uh, I think it's like totally two different things. Like there's like this, this production side of um, of doing video material and stuff that always been in music, and then there is the live music part that that I don't believe is replaceable in some way and um, by uh, kind of uh, like the technique that no, not with the technical standard that we have. That is, Yeah, but what would you, I mean, I don't know, it's a, open the question a bit to all of you. Um, I think it is quite clear that this streaming, uh, like this 2D, uh, or like this empty spaces uh, where a DJ musician is performing without public, and this is streamed as a sort of a TV show in a good or less good quality, is of course like a disaster area and a sort of... Um, um, yeah, a lame uh, transit, a tra transition or transfer from the real world to the virtual world. But um, the question would be, what would be probably other accesses, other perspectives? How could we use these different possibilities or what are the different pol possibilities to act as a musician, especially in these new spaces? 
I mean, maybe we can start again with Ben because you are already a little bit more acquainted with the realm. Yeah, so, yeah, I think there's definitely, it's exciting to, to contemplate what the possibilities could be um, to really like radically rethink what, what, what a show can be and what a performance can be. Um, if we step outside of the typical idea of expecting to just see someone on a stage, um, you know, playing, playing, playing live in our typical sense of that, it's like the, with, with the interactive aspects, it could be, you know, we could see like pretty interesting stuff happening where, uh, you know, a concert is, to, 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 to try to find what the connection, I think, between people would be, would really be where things get exciting. And the sense of actually being able to go to a show with someone and have a shared experience with them uh, as witnessing that is, is definitely something that hasn't really been explored very deeply from what I've seen. So there's a lot of just feeding people that feed from the stage and seeing, you know, someone, you know, behind a pair of CDJs or, you know, behind an instrument or something. Yeah. Um, but the, the interactive aspect of it, I think, is definitely there's a whole, like, very broad sense of, like, you know, what, what playful approaches could we actually take to rethinking what the, the show could be. Um, the difficulty, of course, is, is, is really resources um, and whether, you know, musicians or labels or events really have the resources to engineer the software that would be necessary really to... Yeah, this is like a good question, I think. To push things um, to another level. Um, uh, yeah, I seem to have lost everyone. <laughs> well, no. Hello. Hello. <laughs> everyone is still there. Still but uh, this is also a nice thing about being online. Like you always have to get the feedback of the others. So <laughs> it's actually more interaction, I have sometimes <laughs> the impression. <laughs> but it's also a quite interesting phenomenon. And um, technology, yeah, but the question is, I mean, for example, uh, we are using now one of these tools that is quite uh, common. I don't know, I mean, it's like this kind of uh, Skype, Zoom, etc. thing. And um, I mean, this is like quite a quite a simple tool that you could already use and maybe rethink. I mean, maybe we don't need, I mean, would there be possibilities to um, uh, not to engage in these big productions, but also to to rethink like uh, the things that are already available and to construct a new house with that instead of inviting the star architect? I think so. I think there's room to, I think that's what hackers have always done. You know, it's like co-opting existing technology to use it in a way that the people who created it could never have comprehended or imagined. And I think that's the exciting thing about, you know, people collaborating over YouTube or, you know, like doing live shows where they're collaborating across the world like this and they're playing together and they know that there's going to be internet lag and maybe that's built into what the performance is supposed to be. Um, I think as a computational artist, for me, hacking has been like the methodology for making things. It's about looking around me and being like, okay, what is there that I can use in a way that's artistic, even though it might have been invented for a very purposeful, you know, functional reason. And I think that's, that's where people can get really innovative when it comes to existing tools and using them in a new way. And I think artists have always been the people to do that historically and they will continue to be. Yeah, that's we, what we hope so. As a, I mean, I think like we mm. all had a little bit like the, I always call it the Corona coma. So I think also artists were a little bit under shock or many definitely. Mm. <laughs> so um, yeah, but I also was wondering, I mean, when we see a maze, so um, of course, a maze is a festival for playful media for games. So the game culture already has this realm, this, this space of 3D environments. And now uh, the artists as invaders are coming and are claiming the space. <laughs> and I think what is quite interesting, what happens then, that uh, we are all still standing a little bit in this uh, new empty room and are like little kids. And the question is, what can we do with it now? <laughs> so, and mm. I think there was, there's only like a, like a sort of first steps. And I was wondering, 
I mean, of course, we've heard already like this interactive part is sometimes difficult. So, but um, uh, but maybe besides like this this uh, this presence of the life, um, I wonder, didn't, don't we have like some questions that are really relevant in real world at the moment, like discrimination at doors of concert halls. Um, the reach out to a public, for example, is also a big question. I mean, um, doesn't it give also, or might it give, this is what I'm questioning myself, uh, and also this question to you, a possibility to also overcome some of the structural problems we have in the real world? Would it be a sort of utopian space possible? I think that some of so, the yeah. resources or the lack of resources manifests itself also in the way that we can communicate or not communicate with others. For instance, the availability and the speed of the internet, which ironically has become how we communicate for the past few months with everyone, almost as the only option sometimes. And that's completely unimaginable. I think like in the 90s. <laughs> I mean, it's um, it's still in its baby steps uh, because we're still so limited because we, I think, Gemma, you, you mentioned maybe the idea of having a VR experience or a, a more sensory based experience of communicating with others. I think that that is what this 2D video one way stream seems to be limited to that we, we lack that we really feel that we only we're seen but we're not able to see mm. and there's no sense of space there's no space of others there's no sense of, of anything apart from from just this one one way screen and uh, and that is just because the technology that we have right now is still so unsophisticated. And mm. and even if there is experimental technology, it's still not readily available. Um, but um, Ben, Ben, would you agree to that? That because yeah. like when we see like yeah. what is yeah, happening I, and I, I was yeah yeah I was I was also going to chip in with 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 a similar. Uh, sentiment of like it definitely is exciting to contemplate uh, it, you know, like the shift to virtual spaces, making things more accessible. Um, I think definitely, you know, coming from the perspective of like South African musicians, it's it's always been incredibly difficult for people to get what they do out to a wider audience because it's so difficult to travel out of South Africa and tour, you know, the rest of the world. There are artists who've managed to do it right and done it amazingly. Um, but for every one of them, there's 10 fantastic artists that have come out of this country that no one in the wider audience knows because of the geographical and, uh, you know, financial limitations and stuff that people have. So that's awesome to think about that. But it is also very important to keep in mind that, like, it's, it's uh, you know, specifically for, like, a South African audience, not everyone has access to good internet. Not everyone has access to devices that would allow them to participate in this. So it does become exclusionary in its own way as well, where um, that is some, also something to keep in mind is people do have, you know, people don't all have the same resources and a lot of people are now left out of the, the conversation because of that. So it goes two ways, in my opinion. I'd echo those from Australian from an Australian context. It's exactly the same. I mean, we're so far away. It's like we're very isolated here. And I think in some senses, being online has meant that there's this opportunity to be connected with the world in a way that wasn't really uh, accepted the way that, you know, it is now. Like, that's just how it has to be. And if you, you know, if you're a band here and you don't have to travel, like the, the expense of that is is ridiculously high um it's a huge commitment and but as as ben says i mean there's a there's obviously yeah there are going to be exclusionary things access to technology and i think certainly from an australian perspective like the difference between you know city and rural and indigenous 
people here who don't have access to those things. It's still limiting, but actually, interestingly, I think there's also a generational thing to notice there, which is that I think young people are doing relatively well with this, whereas I think older people, like, you know, we're, we're, used, we're native, we're tech native, we've been used to this for a really long time, but um, it's, I think, the older generation that are finding it a little bit more difficult because they're having to be technical. Um, and that's, it's great that it's forcing them to do that, but also I think there is actually an interesting exclusion potentially there as well. Oop. Mary is gone. Mary is gone. <laughs> Paula. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, the internet in Germany, as you see, is uh, bad, <laughs> honestly. <laughs> So I can't believe that. South Africa was definitely a better experience uh, in many ways, but also in the way of internet, I have to admit. <laughs> Much more advanced. And I think this is... Um, um, yeah, I mean, we are all forced now. But on the other side, I, I, I said, I, uh, there is the question of access to technology. Ah. Welcome back. Hello. You're, where, where are you, Mary, in Brandenburg? <laughs> What was it? Oh, no, I'm, I'm in Brandenburg. I am. Even worse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> For the internet. <laughs> We're just saying, I was just saying that it's like the, that we have like in Germany the, probably the worst internet ever. And well, I think that um, that this to, to the 2D aspect that Mary mentioned also is like super important because for me, I don't see any bigger benefit from this all live streaming stuff that we watch now. That's like pretty the same that we already had like 70 years ago. That was called like regular TV, you know, that you just like film something and it's live in the TV. And this is, and it's, I think there's nothing freaky great about the aspect internet and this what we are doing now with live music because it's like so old and people know this like people know watching something live on the tv on a 2d screen so um um i mean okay you can like like it the video you couldn't like it on the tv and you can like add a comment you couldn't add a comment on the tv in the 50s but still it's like the experience for the viewers is like pretty much the same so um this is like the limitation that we are also uh we know this kind of experience like from so many years like our grandparents know this experience and it's um there is nothing like mm, exploding to uh just do like kind of yeah enjoyable i mean besides i mean besides the question of uh, access to technology so um, but i think you are now a li little bit mean to all the people who are in the realm of g games because this is a world where you can interact where you can connect with people where you where it's not boring yeah, to do something know, that is not only tv screen and i wonder i mean besides the money question um, isn't the format we are using as musicians quite lame for the new world? Aren't you outdated as musicians performing on stage? Don't you have to develop additional skills, maybe? No. <laughs> you can say that about the whole human species. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, maybe we need a little bit more, but of course, uh, maybe we are also training in these online spaces to be different i would uh... maybe well i, mean, I don't I want to the I, i mean we're talking about the music aspect of course there is a game world and there are many other worlds that, to, that to definitely work well in this internet context but not uh, i don't see this so much in the live music world like it's yeah but sorry mary i interrupt you yeah mary do you want to add on that i think there are also to be fair novel experiences that are definitely transcend just being watching a live stream of, of someone as if it was a you know feed of you know live aid in the 80s or something um, something like the block by block west festival which was an entire festival curated that played out in minecraft mm -hmm. um, that was you know built and constructed in a game designed for people to be in the game and participate in that um, You know, it's it's it, it, as a live as a live experience by the traditional standards. I'm sure we'd pale comparison, you know, compared to going to a real concert. 
But at the same time, that was an opportunity for hundreds of people to participate in a whole new kind of concert and engage with it in, in a new, exciting way. So you do have to acknowledge that that is happening and that there's more space for that kind of thing to really just kind of reframe um, what the objectives are and what the, the, the whole purpose of the thing can be. There are definitely exciting possibilities out there. And I think people that have been scratching away at that and, and hopefully we will see more of that. Yeah, I agree. I think the non-linear aspect of, I mean, you know, the interactive part of gaming from a music perspective that's beautiful is having to write in a way that's modular. And that turns into, you know, you're making music that's different every time, you know, that's, that's pretty special. I think that's something that we can learn from gaming. And it's the same in, you know, like a computational exhibition that's generative and interactive. And I think that that is really exciting. That's something that we can take into other other arenas. I think Ben's right. There are things that we can take away from these other processes that are actually novel and really exciting. And I mean, for me, the question would also be, um, must this normal concert format not be also challenged? I mean, I mean, well, it is already challenged by the, by the, by the online world. And um, the question is like, how can you adapt to that? And uh, Mary, you are also working in different realms. You are writing political texts that are going along with your music. That is also, which, where the process is also um, influenced by 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 your thoughts and by by your how you what you criticize or how you see the world. So, don't you do you have the impression you maybe could also transfer these realms of one side text and thought and thinking? and link it somehow in a different way with your sound. So, I mean, do you have any ideas of that, like how you may, might bring this together in a different way? Oh, well, I think that when we have more um, platforms, we can only do mm. different sort of uh, ways of uh, engaging with, we can like, experiment with different ways of communicating with others but the problem for me becomes when that is the default when that is the only option and I think that musicians right now are very much stuck in this way of thinking of we have to do a video stream because that is the only way we could perform mm. and and most people seem to find it absolutely terrifying <laughs> paralyzing even um i think if you were to give a few options and that was only one of them it would pro definitely seem a lot more attractive <laughs> um but uh but i think that there's still so much to explore if if for instance it wasn't just a video production if that was more interactive if there were other elements for instance the elements of having people in different places at the same time or or having somehow the audience become part of the experience if it was also it wasn't just a theater type mm -hmm. of thing but rather a mm -hmm. like i don't know a multi uh multiplayer or a, a multi-participatory mm -hmm. or however you want to call it just mm -hmm. somehow if you open and format I think there's also a good history of um, artists in like not necessarily working in digital spaces trying to explore those ideas. You know, um, you have a band like the Flaming Lips who went through a, a long period of um, organizing gigs where they would like dub tape cassettes, make a bunch of different tape cassettes, and then encourage everyone to come to the show with their cars, park the cars in a circle around the band distribute the tape cassettes and try to synchronize everyone to start playing that music at the same time. Uh, create something where, you know, the people that are coming to the show are directly impacting and shaping this unique thing that comes out of it. Um, and that's something that a band was doing in the 90s using like, you know, set player and people's people or encouraging people to bring their own stereos to shows and stuff like that. Um, it's just, it's an example of the kind of like creativity and thinking outside the box of like, what can that interaction between musicians and audience be? 
I think the possibilities once you start going into a digital space of that kind of thing could be really cool, you know, like being able to feel like you have a hand in what's happening, you know, either in your ears or like what you're seeing on stage. Um, it's potentially super exciting. Uh, if I may add, um, first off, I'll have to look up this particular concept of the flaming lips, which I was not aware of. The yeah. flaming lips have it manifested quite big in the early 90s. So I would be surprised if it actually reached a lot of people because my experience is that audiences outside of, uh, let's say, more of art performance type of experimental avant-garde festivals are quite conservative. A lot of people are not mm -hmm. open to the idea of uh, participating in a different way in a performance. Uh, and so you kind of have to have a lot of humor and self-criticism to try and fail when you see that the audience refuses to engage with an interaction that is unfamiliar to it. Um, so it could work beautifully within the right context. But with certain audiences, I think you as a performer have to be very flexible in order to know where your boundary is to be able to communicate with different types of audiences. Um, so I, I don't think it will work in a big scale. I think it will work on a very special audience, which I personally would love, but I don't think it's very big. <laughs> Any other comment to that? What? Yeah, I would say I agree with you. Uh, sorry. No, sorry. It's you. Go ahead. No, no, no. I didn't <laughs> yeah, understand no, no, what I would you understand. said. If you ask if someone yeah. wants to comment that. No, I, I don't I just don't understand the question. Sorry. Uh, I definitely, from my side, say I agree with you. And again, it's, it's going to be something that we see has been quite a generational thing, probably. It was like, you know, if waving your phone around like changes the intensity of the leds on screen or something that is something that younger people are going to probably be more inclined to pick up and your older traditional music concert goer is just going to be like what the hell is this like i'm not going to wave my phone around at home during a concert or something so that's definitely something to to to, to be aware of and yeah I, i think in terms of from a mainstream perspective people generally often do just want things to be the same but things do change over time um, so, you know, things aren't, culture isn't set in stone and, and, and this stuff is constantly adapting. So yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens. And I also think, um, uh, just to add on this, that, um, actually, I mean, we know that due to this pandemic, that the music system is already a system that is I mean, for, for, um, especially on the financial side, quite a broken system. I mean, um, Jamek said also like you have to promote yourself, you have all, all, everybody has to, I mean, all that we discussed throughout the last 10 years in music was like, okay, the artists have to learn to promote themselves, there are no people anymore, they hel can help you, you don't earn any money if you don't invest double the time, then you should inv uh, invest maybe this in your music production, So, but you are constantly busy with other things. And um, I was wondering if... Uh, this game or like this, also in the game industry there's a lot of money <laughs> so maybe it would be fun to hook up with them a little bit more uh, than with um, and then waiting for uh, streaming services to pay artists a little uh, uh, 1.00001 cent more first of all because probably the question would be couldn't musicians add something more interesting also to the games world and also uh, wouldn't it not create an access also for as said also before for different publics that is uh, that are quite uh, maybe don't know what you do but come and because they're not interested in games but then suddenly find themselves in a concert so because you could also lure in people because this is the online world you can connect spaces that are normally not connected so you can go crazy and uh, maybe also find other ways of getting of monitor of monetarization of your work so of friends so and i wonder isn't this a good chance like also to leave the broken music system that exists 
since 500 years behind and uh, get uh, try out something new. Maybe Jamek, well, who's also critical, I don't know. <laughs> in gaming, just like in music, you have the mainstream industry and you have the underground indie industry. I think I personally would connect more with the underground small team game building community and I don't think that, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that there isn't that much money in it. And also that was not quite, personally, it's not really a motivation for me, maybe it is for others, but. Um, yeah, I also think that, uh, yeah, that's like also a matter of money. Like, of course you can find your new uh, way of expression, but it's it's already hard to get paid for a regular gig in a club. So, I mean, who wants to pay you for a Minecraft or a Fortnite gig that you do like by your own and uh, where you have no promoters, we just do to make like some kind of a new way of experience or something. But uh, somehow, um, I don't know, like I don't see the connection financial wise also. Yeah, it was a question. I, I don't also don't have the answer to this, but uh, we also know, um, and there you probably agree that the music economy is in a way dead if you don't do other things besides uh, perform. I mean, yeah. uh, performing does not pay you in a way. So you always have to be creative well, with all the side products. <laughs> my full-time job is performing. And I think everybody who I know who is a full-time musician, whether it's more experimental or a little bit more, I don't know, or poppier, um, Everybody is making maybe 80% of what they make from live shows. Um, so that means that for us, the current situation financially is not sustainable. Um, and we're only able to survive from funding and governmental aid uh, and shows that are funded and basically <laughs> paid for by governments or by public and uh, private investors. Um, uh, May I, I also see that mm -hmm. distribution companies yep. are now closing because everything is connected. Mm -hmm. um, but And everything is in the real world. Everything requires humans to interact with each other physically to some extent. Um, so you see, I mean, um, the, the picture for you is like despair. So it's dark and we just have to um, have a house called... Um, um, we have to wait until the clouds are gone away. Let's <laughs> hope that we're not going to all die very quickly from the virus ah. and that <laughs> humans who survive up yep. there. <laughs> the I think I have a more optimistic view, but I am, I, as, as we said before, I'm buffered by the, the industry that I work in because it's film. I mean, sure, productions have been halted because of coronavirus, but, you know, I, I'm in post-production, so I was already working on a pipeline of films, and that meant that I had a relatively steady stream of work to a degree. Yeah. Um, but I think what is changing for me is the exhibition space, and that's... That's really interesting to see that moving online. And I think, I mean, you know, VR and AR are still pretty infant technologies and they're not great at the moment, but I think there is definitely potential in those kinds of spaces to do something that's more embodied and more immersive. And I think that's where like sound and visuals are coming together in a way that feels like the technology is starting to catch up in that, in that marriage. Um, but certainly I feel like, there is a silver lining, but yes, I think performance is the thing that feels the most scary at the moment because it's like, oh gosh, is is that going to go back to normal? And then with the rest of it, it's like, okay, I feel like we actually need to evolve away from the way that we were doing things before, and maybe this has sped up that process to some degree. Yeah, and also like uh, times are changing. I mean, like I am also convinced definitely that this format of a concert of people being together and uh, either making. I mean, somebody is making music and we interact with that by dancing or listening or whatever, will not die, of course. Mm -hmm. I mean, it is a little bit problematic at the moment to meet, but also, of course, it will restart at a certain moment and somehow it did not really die because we also know all about these 
illegal party scenes where like people are still dancing and listening to something, whether it's good or bad, but that is a proof of uh, that this format is not going uh, not to go away. But I wonder if it's not like, as always, um, as it seems pushed also through the pandemic that the digital realm gets much more important for us also like as a sort of um, medium for exchange even if you don't have the physical exchange it's like something that kept people also f mentally alive in the times where we could not meet physically and uh, so this tool proves to be quite important and helpful and I was wondering if it's not also a duty like to explore it artistically and to um, add also other art form or give other art forms uh, more um, b or a singular bigger presence in these realms. So because now it's like as with in film music, music is super important, but at the forefront is the picture. So mm. and it's, uh, and why not in games like in the forefront is like this interaction. Of course, it's games, the playfulness, but why shouldn't it be also the music that gets into the center point? And uh, what would it mean then? Or how could you get a standing in this? Because I think um, the with this technological development that we have at the moment, um, and also a younger generation really being constantly online, um, I think there is also sort of uh, uh, urgency, like to react on that, and uh, we all know that people won't go away there anymore unless the server all dies and uh, <laughs> I don't know the Armageddon day comes or something. I don't know. What do you think? I mean, like, uh, okay, Mary yeah. and Jamek are waiting, <laughs> and I think yeah. Freya and Ben. My, my feeling is is that like, people people also need. Uh, you know, this is collectively as, a, you know, the human beings right now are going through a tough patch. Yeah. And it's in times like this that people really turn towards art and seek comfort um, and connection in, in that. Um, and I think that's for everyone now making stuff is, is an opportunity to realize like, hey, in some ways it's, it's, it's a little difficult, like for us making stuff. Bob now, which is a very silly, very, you know, playful, weird game that does not speak to the world's current issues now. And in some ways it feels, we feel a little bit self-conscious trying to be like, hey, we know the world's on fire. We know like all this crazy shit's going down. But if you want to take a break for a half hour and skate around in a frog suit, like we have the game for you. And on, 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 I, I myself sort of like, pendulum swing between feeling like this is so dumb and this is not helping anyone and being like no this is so dumb and it's going to make some people smile and make some people feel better about themselves and I'm really grateful for the opportunity to actually be able to do that in this time um, and uh, I think yeah we, we, we do are unfortunately in a space where our opportunity or the, the platforms that we can work in or the space that we can work in are changing um, and there's definitely real downsides to it, but it also it, it does op offer offer people an opportunity to, to kind of you know put their creativity towards trying to see like hey what other possibilities are yeah. out there. Um, I think we are soon at the end of our discussion and uh, open it up for the questions. Um, if I got the signatures right here in the studio, uh, but maybe just to summarize a little bit. So um, let's say. As the whole world, we are a little bit divided into, yes, the digital, digital realm offers new opportunities and it doesn't, or like not as much as we would like to wish. Um, then maybe the thing is that uh, everything will be different, but not as we imagine it <laughs> at the end of this whole process. Um, then also it's like quite clear that uh, there is... Uh, Obviously, music at the moment can't be completely alone in this space because this is boring and then like normal TV and this we know already. And uh, But there are, of course, ways of getting maybe out of this. This might imply better financial means also for musicians to 
get into this realm and or it might also imply a little bit more help through other people that have different knowledge and then can provide spaces where artists then can perform again like concert halls uh, are also not constructed by artists so maybe uh, Fortnite offers a sort of concert hall probably already where you can then also be engaged and perform I don't know so <laughs> it might be a possibility so we are at the beginning of something that we that might be quite interesting but also of course makes us um, uh, a little bit sad because there are things we are all missing definitely and that we hope that soon will c come back and uh, maybe then also this streaming things will be forgotten. But the best thing is, in my opinion, is that uh, these times are probably the best documented ever because everything is filmed, we are filmed at the moment <laughs> and as long as digital storage, storage spaces exist, it will be available and uh, scientists can then <laughs> reveal what it meant to live in the 20 beginning of the 21st century with the pandemic. Um, questions? May, may, let's, let's open it there or if some of you want to add. How does it work actually? The new in online world is now the voice of God coming <laughs> and <laughs> I was going to riff on what Ben was saying before as well, which is that I think I think this time has given people space. It's forced people to take some space to think about what they want. And I think artists, like, that's an area where we've always excelled because we need to lean into that space all the time. And so I found a lot of people around me who sort of work in traditional jobs have been like, oh, I'm really isolated. Whereas a lot of artists have been like, this is amazing. I've got all this time to be reflective and to create things. And I'm leaning into that and finding an escape. I mean, I think, yeah, sometimes it's like, oh gosh, what I'm making, like it's not changing the world, but actually also it's gonna, it's gonna bring some joy to someone's life and surely, Surely that's worth pursuing, you know? I think that's the thing that artists have always given people, like what's the point in life if you don't get to do those things? So I think it's been a moment of reflection for the whole world, which is really beneficial. Yeah, and I think so too. And I think also that there are many people who have also these normal day jobs that found also comfort in providing spaces also for mu musicians. I mean, like um, uh, as VSCTM will soon um, hook up with this uh, Club Matryoshka, for example, and it's a it's a joint venture from people from the Philippines and uh, the west uh, and the west coast of the U.S. And I mean, these are mainly people who are working in this realm of programming, of uh, doing something in the real world, and that do it in their spare time. They try to provide spaces for artists online, and. Um, I think this is all like Club Quarantaine here in uh, like it, that comes from Berlin or like uh, the other one Club Quarantine from Toronto where, where it's like quite amazing that um, there are all these professional people that normally earn tons of money are dedicating their spare time to do something good and additional like to, to really also help uh, the music system to somehow to, to, to survive and thrive in this only possible realm at the moment. Um, any other additions from... Hmm? Also, okay, I just see that we are actually at the end of our time, because like if not we will delay all the other things. Even online it's possible to spend too much time. <laughs> And uh, yeah, thank you very much, uh, Freya, Mary, Ben, Jamek, for your insights and participation. Um, it was a pleasure. And then also everybody who watched us, because this is this is really the pity that we don't see our public, at least. <laughs> and uh, uh, so thank you for all the wonderful people who followed this. So I wish you a great day and I hope we provided some ideas and aspects that bring your imagination further. <laughs> bye. And also bye to bye. Bye. all bye. over the globe. Thank you everyone. Thank bye. you. Bye.